Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna reveal what is the most valuable engineering principle you can learn, in my opinion. Let's go. You know, I studied engineering for a grand total of seven and a half years. Did you hear I finally graduated? Yeah, and just a shade under a decade too, all right. You know, a lot of people go to college for seven years. I know, they're called doctors. And during that time, I learned a ton of valuable information. Actually, wait right here. This is every textbook for an undergraduate and graduate degree in mechanical engineering. And I learned pretty much everything in each of these books. It's a lot of stuff. Everything from conservation of energy to Newton's laws of motion, you know, from mechatronic design to Bernoulli's principles. There's a lot of valuable information, you know, but there's one thing I learned, one principle, one idea that really took root inside my brain. And it has continuously paid dividends well into my professional career. And it isn't in any of these textbooks. I'm talking about the KISS principle. Not that kind of KISS. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, stupid. Or keep it stupid, simple. Or keep it short and simple. A few different interpretations, same idea. Which is that the best and most effective solution to most problems is almost always the simplest one. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video so far. If you are, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. You know, that kind of stuff really helps the channel continue to grow. And if you're thinking about studying in engineering or any other STEM discipline, be sure to check out my book. It is the how-to guide for success for any engineering or STEM degree. It's the recipe that I use to go from a 2.0 all the way to a 4.0 and a master's degree in mechanical engineering, right? Time management, lifestyle, mindset, studying performance, exam performance, it's all in here. It's getting a ton of great reviews and helping out a lot of students. So if you're a prospective student or if you're a current student and you're just struggling, I guarantee this book will help. It's available in paperback, ebook, and audiobook. I'll put links in the description and back to the video. Look, I love engineers, but there's a large number of us who tend to overcomplicate things. What did you say? I think it might be partly because the topic of engineering as a whole can be quite complicated. So some of us may feel like the solutions must also be complicated. I also think that some of us may feel that there's a pressure that comes with the title of engineer, you know, to show off everything you can do, especially when we're around other engineers. And that's even, even if the issue you're trying to solve is a simple one. So a lot of times we'll end up overthinking, over designing and adding features and variables that just aren't necessary. So say it with me, keep it simple, stupid. Are you crazy? Or just plain stupid? Stupid is stupid does, Mrs. Blue. I think the best way to demonstrate the power of these kind of principles is with real world examples. So that means it's story time. During my freshman year in my ME 1000 course, we had a robot design competition slash tournament where the objective was to retrieve an egg that was on top of a platform faster than your opponent. Your robot had to start a certain distance away from the platform and be completely autonomous. So all you could do was just press the go button and hope you programmed it the right way and it did the right thing. During the design phase, we had this kid on my team who wanted to create like an egg chairlift of sorts, you know, that would unfold, move into position, grab the egg, and then carry it to safety. You know, it sounded really cool on paper, but once we really started to flesh out the design, there was gonna be a bunch of motors, servos, and just a lot of moving parts, which all equates to several potential points of failure. So while the idea sounded super cool, you know, that's practicality, chance of success, and the probability that we would even get it done in time, we're all going against it. So as a team, we pivoted and decided to totally embrace the KISS principle. We stopped caring about the coolness factor and started designing based on the three things that matter the most, which is performance, or how well does it work when it works, repeatable functionality, or how often does it work, and cost. How much time and money will it take and does that jive with the deadline? So we really focused on optimizing our design based around those three things. And to do that, we really had to simplify everything. Keep it simple, stupid. So instead of asking questions like, what else can we add? We started asking questions like, what can we take away? You know, is this part necessary? Does this thing add value? And if so, how much value? In other words, we went through every single aspect of our design and asked the question, does this part or feature directly contribute to the intended function of the robot? And if it doesn't, throw it out. And if it does, can we simplify even further? 
So it was through this process that we were able to completely redesign our robot to have only one motor and one moving piece, which massively decreased the potential points of failure. It was basically a base built from 2x4s and a large lever arm with a counterweight. And we used sticky flytrap paper to stick to the egg. It wasn't the most attractive thing to look at, but it was extremely effective. And because it was so simple, we were able to build it pretty quickly. So that gave us a lot of time to iterate and optimize its performance. You know, on that point, I think might be a little bit more important than you might realize. You'd be surprised how many teams, you know, both in school and in industry, don't really give themselves enough time to really fine tune and optimize their design or project. So many teams will kind of limp to the limp to the you know finish line with a barely functioning robot or project. Long story short, we ended up winning the competition with probably the simplest robot there. The moral of that story is this. Simplicity equals less variables, which equals less potential points of failure, which very often leads to higher, more consistent performance and lower cost, and that's time and money. So it's simplifying, streamlining, you know, removing non-value added things, increasing efficiency. That's the KISS principle. This is the way. That's the kind of stuff that will take you further than any other specific topic in any of your textbooks. So keep it simple, stupid. And I wanna be clear on something. You know, not only will the KISS principle benefit you a ton while you're in school, but it will be even more valuable during your professional career. Because when it really all boils down, employers only want two things, and that's to lower costs and to increase product sales. And one of the best ways to achieve those two things is to employ the KISS concept everywhere you can. Product design, manufacturing processes, workflows. Keep it simple, stupid. So my advice to you is this. Whenever you have to come up with a solution to an issue or a design or a process, you should always ask yourself, how can I make this simpler, cheaper, and less complicated without sacrificing performance? Or even better, is there already a solution to my problem that exists in the world that I can just take off the shelf? Many times, you know, we engineers get all excited to solve a problem when a perfectly good solution already exists. So you should try to create like a KISS lens of sorts, right? Through which you view everything that comes at you, always searching for the simplest solution to your problems and projects. You know, it's a simple thing, the KISS principle and mindset, but it has paid off huge for me and I'm confident it will for you as well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know if you disagree, you know, what is your most valuable engineering principle? I'd love to hear from you. But that's it for now, so I hope you enjoyed that video and be sure to check back for more engineering tips, advice, experience, and information. But until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.